Hi, my name is Helena Turner. I'm one of the volunteers here at Lynn House. And one of my passions is uh, working with fiber. And so I work with many different types of fiber. Um, I did a video a while back on spinning. And because I'm a spinner, I think, well, now what am I going to do with this fiber that I've created by spinning? Um, I'm not the best of knitters. I can do a little knitting, but then I thought of weaving. And a few years ago, someone donated me a loom very similar to this. This is a loom that has been donated to Lynn House. We kind of suspect it being around the 70s that it was warped, being this nice uh, orange 70s color. This is a more modern loom. This is a Leclerc. They still make these type of looms, um, but this is an older version. Like I said, it's probably around the 70s. Weaving has been around for a very, very long time. And the concept of weaving is that you have two sets of, of threads that bind together. They interlace together. You have the uh, warp threads that are the longitudinal threads, and then you have the web that goes across. And you, weaving then just interlaces both these threads together and it can be done um, more complicated on a, a, a loom like this or very very simply. 27,000 years ago they have found evidence of uh, woven products, baskets, cordage, fabric. So it's been around for a very very long time. Around the fourth century cotton was starting to be produced and so this was, uh, again, started to be used for weaving. And they found a very prolific uh, area around the Nile where they were doing weaving with cotton. Around 35,000 BCE, we see in China that they are using um, silk from the silk cocoons. And um, so silk now starts to come in. During the medieval times, mostly the, what they were using was wool, cotton, linen, and for the lower classes, they were using nettle. The colonists, when they came over, they were weaving with, again, wool, linen, flax, a mixture of flax and wool called woolsey linsey, and then also hemp was a, another product that they used to weave with. So before the Industrial Revolution, most of the weaving was done at home. It was predominantly a male's job because with the bigger looms, it takes a lot of strength to use the beater bar to beat. The women would do most of the spinning and the men would do the weaving. So spinning was the first to be um, mechanized and they invented the spinning jenny. They then decided that they thought they could invent something to do weaving, but they were saying, oh no, that's much too complicated. That could never be mechanized. But by around 1764, the mechanized looms were invented. In uh, 1804, the jacquard loom was invented. Now, uh, that was a more mechanicalized one, and it's a precessor to the computer. There are multiple little cards, and each card decides how the loom is going to be moved to produce a more complicated pattern. We are very lucky here in Ontario, um, there's very few around, but Ontario actually has two jacquard looms that are working. There's one at the Ontario Science Centre, if you have a chance to go down there and see that one in action. And also one of our sister museums up in Lang in the Peterborough area, so the Lang Pioneer Museum, actually has a weaving building and they have multiple different types of looms there, but they also have a working jacquard loom. So looms all work the same. They all have the same process. It doesn't matter whether you have uh, one like this or a hand loom or a, a big barn loom, they're all going to work with the same process. So the first of all, the thing is you have to have a shedding. So the shedding is the opening here that you put your fiber through. So you, it needs to be, have an opening to put the fiber through. The second is the picking. Now the picking can be done with um, a needle going in and out of each fiber, or this is what's called a shed stick because it goes through the shed. So the shed stick goes through the shed to the other side. And the last part is the beating up. And this is the part that I talked about where on big looms is really um, heavy work. And so, you beat it up. You have to beat up what you've put through. 
On this particular loom, it has some more complicated pieces. So some of the pieces that you'll find on uh, larger looms and more mechanical type looms, this is the warp beam. So this beam right here is where all the warp goes. So before you can even start doing any weaving, you have to get your warp on. So I have what's called a warping board. So to put the warp on, first of all, you have to decide how long of a project uh, that you're going to make. Are you making table runners? Are you making um, placemats? Are you making a scarf? Then you need to measure out the amount that you need for the item you're making and a little extra. You always need some extra at, the, at both ends. And so you, this board then helps you, you can measure out what you want and then you run your warp. And the thing about a warp, you want to have material that is quite strong. You don't want it to be breaking because there's gonna be a lot of tension under it. And the other thing is, is when you warp to get your length, you need to put a cross in. So as you can see, I've put a cross in here. The next time around, and I have to decide how many, once I have the length, how wide I want my uh, work to be. And I would go back and over and cross and go around again. and come back. And I have to do this as many times as I need. And once I've worked out all of my threads that I need, then I have to warp the machine, warp the loom. So it gets threaded through the next part, which is the heddles, which are these metal bits that are hanging here. And there's little eye holes in each one of them. And depending on the pattern that I want to do, so this loom, I can only do a plain weave. One row goes up, the other row goes down. And then the opposite, one row goes down, the other row goes up. The one I have at home has four of these types of heddles, so I can make a different sort of pattern. Some of the bigger barn looms would have petals on the floor. Some of them may have four petals six petals, eight petals, 10 petals. So giving you more different types of patterns. The heddles on this one are metal. So then we put all of the warp through the heddles. I'm gonna come around here. And then we also have to put it through, this is the reed, which is the beater. Okay, again, it separates all of the different fibers in a row. And then finally, we have the apron. This is the apron, so when you finished your work, this is where it's going to roll up onto. Now this one also has um, some little uh, cranks on the side, so when I fill up this area, I can loosen it and move it forward and roll it onto this roller. So you will have go continuously rolling on until you've finished all of your warp. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit more of how to do this. So again, this is my, sh my shed stick. I'm going to insert it into, now I have to make sure what I had done before. So before, I don't want to do that one again. I'm going to change my heddles. So on this, I'm going to flip it so that it switches. And I'm going to give it a little, so now I have my shed space again. And I'm going to put my shed stick through. And I want to keep my edges nice and smooth. I don't want to, if you pull too tight, you're going to, it's going to go in. It's going to have a wobbly edge. And to, one of the things to do that is I'm going to pinch a little bit and I'm going to keep this on an angle. I'm going to pull my beater bar down. Now I don't want too big of a loop. Don't want messy edges. And sometimes I'll do it twice. And then now I want to do the next way. I'm going to flip it again. And I'm going to bring this through this shed again to the other side.
put it on an angle, give it a little beat, flip it back the other way. I'll go two more times. And then I want to show you a few other things. So not everybody has a nice loom like this. But what we're hoping is that um, during the spring at one of our uh, histories in the park that we'll be able to get the loom out. And maybe when you come for a visit, you can have a try and do a little bit of weaving. Add your touch to our piece of fabric that's going here. So we're really not sure what this is. It could be a table runner. It could be placemats because we haven't gone very far on it. So when we take it off the warp, we'll find out what we got. <laughs> but they would have used looms, bigger looms to make wool fabric. So your wool would be on here. You can make carpets. You can make, if you're a fine spinner of cotton, you could make cotton fabric. For a bigger loom, this is what's called a boat shuttle. So it's very similar to my shed stick. It has a little bit of a bobbin here and that comes off. I could fill this with fiber and then I put this back on. And then this then, I open up my shed and because this is small, it was meant for a bigger one, but it does the same thing. It will bring the fiber through and it will slide much faster. You can shoot these ones across when you have a huge shed on it. So this is called an inkle loom. And again, it's a very basic loom, but mostly what it's made for um, making like straps. And I've started working on this one to make a strap for a satchel that I'm making. So this will be the straps for my satchel. And it works similar. Now I talked about the metal heddles on this loom, whereas an inkle loom has what we call our fabric heddles. So these little um, strings down here will hold half of the work down. So I press down on here and look at, there's my shed again. I don't have a shed stick for this one, but I've made one out of a piece of cardboard and just wrapped some of the fiber around it. So I've already come this way. Now I want to switch to go the opposite way. So I'm going to lift up these ones. This is my shed now here. I can now put my fiber through here. And now I don't have a beater bar. How am I going to beat this down to make it nice and tight? Well, the best thing I use for this, one of my favorite tools, and something that we all have in our own homes, are, I can use a comb that will beat it down, or another thing to use as a fork that will beat it down as well. Now I wanna go back, I'm going to bring my shed down. I'm going to run this through. and I'm going to beat it. The nice thing, I was fortunate to find one of these at a thrift store. This is a homemade one. You can purchase these. And we talked about the warping uh, board. An Inca loom actually comes with its own warping board. So it warps the length that you want. The other nice thing about this loom too, is as you can see, it has all these little pegs. So if I didn't have um, a tape on here, I could make some small item as well by weaving, by putting some nails in these holes. So this is a dual purpose. It can do multiple things. To advance this one, as I mentioned on this one, there's some cranks that you roll. This one, I just sort of grab the fiber and I kind of brace it against myself and I can give it a little pull and it will move forward so that I can advance the fiber, put the back, and now I have more space now to start doing some more weaving. If you don't have anything like this and you still want to do some weaving, there's lots of other options available to you. 
So here I have a frame. It could be a picture frame. This one is again one that I found at a thrift store. It already had some uh, grooves cut into it. So I assume somebody was using this for exactly the same purpose I'm using it for to do some weaving. I don't have a shed stick. I don't can't to open it up. So I have an old ruler that opens it up if I want to put some fibers through. Or another option I have is a little darning needle here and I can uh, weave in and out and pull my fibers through. Get them nice and even. And I would go back just going uh, under, over, under, over like this. And pulling it through. And then I can use my, if I got all the way over to the other side, I can use my little shed stick that I'm using here to push everything down nice and tidy. Or I can go back with my little comb and tighten things up again. So then that's, you know, and you can use this, I'm just using yarn. And because the yarn was quite thin, I actually doubled it up. So I have two pieces of yarn to make it thicker. So I chose a variegated yarn and I had also had um, some gold yarn with uh, a little bit of uh, texture to it uh, to do some sort of pattern. So a variegated yarn is a nice yarn to use and you don't have to keep changing your colors all the time. You don't have a frame. You can make one. This is just a piece of cardboard. And this time I've put a little piece on either end just to lift it up a bit so we have some space. And I'm using just pieces of fabric. I have a piece of cardboard down here just to give me some space because when I'm finished doing this, I'm going to cut one corner here and tie two together. And I'm going to go to the opposite side and tie two together and then I'll trim down like the fringe. I've also warped this one using two different colors so that it makes it easier to know which one you're going over and under. And so that's another simple way and again using just some pieces of leftover fabric. Another thing that you can use to weave with is I have some t-shirt material. So again, thrift store or old t-shirts at home, cut them into strips. And again, you can use these strips then to do some weaving. You can use old sheets. You can use anything that you can find to do your weaving with. Here we have a paper plate. Again, we've just put the warp threads back and forth across it and taken a one of these little needles and wove in and out. Uh, again, it's a variegated thread, so you get a nice little pattern and it could become a mug rug. Here you can find a piece of wood, a piece of driftwood, as long as you have a Y so that you can put your threads through. And again, if you notice when you look at this end, I've crossed them, looped them back and forth. It helps keep the um, warp threads separated and Somewhere in my sewing supplies, I found this very old flat darning needle, and it's the perfect item to use to again, go weaving in and out. We grow lavender here, and a number of years ago, I probably around 12 years ago, I made what is called a lavender wand. This one's very, very old, but it still smells like lavender. So again, it's weaving. You've bent the lavender over top of the flower part, and you've used a ribbon, to weave in and out to encase the lavender. This would have been put in a closet or a drawer to keep your linens fresh. And hopefully, maybe this summer, we'll be able to make some lavender ones here at the Lind House Museum. So here we are over in the parlor of Lind House, and we have a few items that have been woven. On this couch here, we have a number of what are called coverlets. So they're like blankets and you use them on your bed, but they are called a coverlet. So as you can see, they all have many different types of designs and they've been woven on 
much larger looms than what we have here. And uh, we have, they can come in all sorts of different patterns and styles. Um, this one has multiple colors, whereas the other two are just two separate colors. So there are many different styles of these coverlets. We have this quilt that has been donated. Now the quilt is made out of wool and the, the wool is woven in many places. So the wool would have been woven on a loom and then it has been quilted and it has been tied. So thank you for spending some time with me and learning a little bit about weaving. I invite you to come and visit us here at the Lynn House Museum. Hopefully when we have our history in the park, you'll be able to come over and we'll have the looms working and you'll get a chance to actually do some weaving. Mm -hmm.